Dodge wants to challenge you to find a car that's under $30,000 before destination that puts out 268 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque. According to them, you're not going to find it. Now, this vehicle is the 2024 Dodge Hornet GT. Essentially, this is the base version of the GT with a couple options on it. Now, there's two versions of this vehicle. There's the GT and there's the RT, and the RT is a plug-in hybrid. I'm going to cover that in a different video. But this one, this is where it's at. Why? because they're taking on what we consider at TFL Studios to be the benchmark. And that would be the Mazda CX-30 with the turbocharged engine. That thing is a beast and it handles remarkably well. This competes directly with that. So, is it as good? Can't tell you that, but I can tell you about what you're looking at right here. Okay, so if you look at the platform and a lot of the components that are under the hood and everything else, well, it does share quite a bit with the Alfa Romeo Tonale. But all the sheet metal is unique, the interior is unique, etc. What you get under the hood, I'm about to put up the hood, this is the piece de resistance because this is the standard powertrain. There's no weak 2.5 Targier Shark or anything else that comes underneath here. Nye, 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 nye. Look at that. Now, have a look at that big fat thing that says turbo on top because this baby is all about its powertrain. 268 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque coming out of a two-liter turbocharged engine hooked up to a nine-speed automatic transmission, standard all-wheel drive. Now, there's a power takeoff that is deep in there and when you accelerate hard enough and need power to go to back to the rear wheels, it connects and shoots that power back there up to 50% torque split. So it's a very different setup than the RT. Completely different car in that respect. But because this is a really, really powerful turbo, its gas mileage is 24 MPG combined. Yeah, okay, let's take a look at the styling. Now, if you look up front, you're gonna see what's very similar to other Dodge products. They basically said, we want it to look like a Dodge right out of the box. So they got the squinty eye look. It's very similar to, let's say a Charger or more importantly, it's big brother, the Durango. And you're gonna see more of that styling in the rear. If you look over here, you're going to see these hood vents. They're actually functional. You see there's a little hole right there. That's because it allows air to pass through and extracts heat and shoots it out. By the way, the hood itself, its overall design, very lightweight because they've got shocks underneath. It's really easy to open. Not everybody does that. Now, what space does this compete with as we work our way to the back? Well, it competes with the Honda HRV, the Toyota Corolla Cross, the Volkswagen Taos the Chevy Trailblazer, and of course the Mazda CX-30, which we think personally, this is what this truly competes against, just because of certain numbers, right? Now, remember I was talking about that styling in the back? Well, you can really see it here. This wraparound style is very similar to what you're gonna see on a Durango or a Charger. And you get a little GT badge. You know why that's black? because it actually has the black top package, which gives you murdered out little insect on the side. Did you see the Hornet? Let me show you the Hornet. Cause it's all like badass and angry. Look at that, yeah, I'm angry. They were joking about it because it's looks like that. Have you ever seen those Hornets that are remarkably dangerous? They're murder Hornets that are all black. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the back. Rear wiper butt. There's no separate glass that opens. And, vebela, over 22 cubic feet of cargo space in the back here. Now, unlike its bigger, beefier brother, there is room for a spare back here, but this one seems like it has a repair kit and the seats do fold 60-40. Okay, there is a pass-through as well. Now, if you fold everything down, you have over 55 cubic feet of cargo space. Both 
Behind the second row, and with everything folded, it's about mid-pack in terms of cargo space. A lot more than, say, the Mazda CX-30, but less than vehicles like the Toyota Corolla Cross. Interesting space that it inhabits. How about we close this and look at the interior? Have a look-see. Come on in. Join me, will you? Okay, hop on in. We're gonna close the door and we're gonna start this puppy up. You know why? Because somebody pulled up with a yappy dog. Okay, look at these big displays. That's awesome. This is a 10 point, uh, four inch. 10.25. 10.25 inch screen, sorry. And this is a 12.3 inch screen right here. Both standard, by the way. And this gives you the opportunity to actually put in an awful lot of information right up here in the front, including navigation, which will pop up right here as you're driving, which is awesome. Okay, this screen here is part of Uconnect 5, and the whole system, standard with the car. So screens, system, all standard. This setup over here, I wanted to point out because I really do think that this is where other vehicles should be going, and that is toggle switches. But this is only for the heating and air conditioning system. It doesn't cover anything else. So the seats, which in this car are heated, you have to do use the screen in order to trigger them and make them happen. And steering wheel. It's all right here. Yeah, but it's, there are no hard buttons. There are additional hard buttons on the steering wheel, which are everything from your lane departure system and cruise control this sport button this is extremely important i'll get to that in a sec and then of course over here for your infotainment system and additional screens that will pop up over here and you can see that there's some changes and it does a couple different things and it allows you to move around but for the most part it's a pretty simple setup now canceled yeah she canceled me down here auto stop start it works. It's relatively seamless. It appears to be a system that when you stop at a light will only reactivate when you pull your foot off the brake. If you're in traffic, then it eventually will kind of figure out that you're in traffic and it won't do a stop start. And then you have the other components here. Electronic parking brake, volume control, and then parking systems that I don't particularly love to play with. So if you want to avoid using those, just leave them off, which is what I would do. Okay, um, you have USB, USB-C over here, 12 volt setup, and then these vents. Now they have proven to be unusual because we didn't figure out how they worked until finally, this is a positioning, it's not volume control, <laughs> okay? I'm an idiot, I thought there were, it looks like a volume control knob to me. So anyway, that's how you move it left and right. This is up and down. And the style is exactly the same in both vehicles. So all that is exactly the same. Now, sport button. If you hit the sport button, everything changes in the vehicle in terms of steering and acceleration. It's a little bit more immediate and you, you feel it faster it changes around the way the algorithm works with the transmission as well this is a nine speed transmission not a six speed that's inside the rt and the shifts change completely now this does not have paddle shifters the other vehicle the rt did have paddle shifters but you still do have a manual mode that you can shift into and you can feel every gear that you're going into so in other words click 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 as opposed to not feeling it. Some people like that. This does have the Harman Kardon stereo system. And unusually, if you got this package, you would normally get a sunroof. But as the guide said when we looked at it in terms of it's, it's kind of like a sticker, it basically said that there was a delete and you got, was it $600 back? 615 $615 back 
for not having the sunroof. Now my guess is that it has to do with components and some issues there, but as you can see here, uh, it's down here I think. There we go, right there. Now, let's move over here. <gasps> $40,000, $40,710, are you crazy? Well, that's because you've got a bunch of packages. So above the base price, and this is the Hornet GT Plus, by the way, and the Plus immediately gives you some extra goodies. But once you, if you decided not to get the Plus, you'd still get the powertrain, just not all the fancy wheels and everything else. All right, so this whole price here at $40,710, well, that can be considered competitive to some people. It is above the price of a lot of the competitors from Toyota, from Honda, from Volkswagen. But it's in the same ether as like Mazda. Now, if you get the base version of this, then you are at what would the top of the level of these other vehicles, the Toyotas, the Hondas and whatnot. Those can well go into the $30,000, $32,000, $33,000 zone, and that's where this starts. So. You get standard, the turbocharged engine, the all-wheel drive, these screens. That's all part of the package. So, it's up to you guys to decide whether or not it's worth your money or not. But in the near future, we're going to have a bunch of videos featuring this vehicle and its big brother, including driving impressions. So stay tuned for that.